I'm Logan Plaster, Editor-in-Chief at Startup Health, a company that's investing in the entrepreneurs who are trying to invent the future of health. In my job, I get to meet and interview some of the most fascinating creative problem solvers in the health industry. They inspire me and give me a great hope for the future. This show is an attempt to share some of that inspiration with you. I want to introduce to you some of the women and men, the brilliant entrepreneurs who are creating the companies that are going to define health for a generation. We're calling this Health Moonshots because at Startup Health we believe that improving health for everyone on the planet needs to be the great collaborative effort of our time. Like sending a man to the moon the first time, the health moonshots of ending cancer and improving children's health and women's health need to involve creativity and long-term commitment and massive investment. And that process, in our humble opinion, begins with the entrepreneurs. The first in our cast of characters is inventor Gene Friedman, a biomedical engineer at Johns Hopkins University. I was actually sitting in a, in a very boring lecture. Um, and, and, and it really, um, I, I just, my mind started going. And, you know, whenever my kids would, uh, would get sick, you know, I'd be at a loss on whether or not I should, uh, I should be calling a doctor, right? And, and so it occurred to me that it would be really nice to have a device, a machine, that could tell you that. So the problem formed, how can you get a general assessment of health rapidly? Sathya Alumalai was getting his MBA at Johns Hopkins when he heard Gene Friedman give a presentation about a new kind of at-home health monitor that he was developing in his lab. What were you thinking when you first met him and you first saw what he was working on? For me, it was I was going through this challenge of uh, how am I going to better manage my mom's health, right? So for me... I was looking into, can I find a communication tool that can help communicate what's happening with my mom's health, with me, and also with our physician in real time. And when I met Gene and, and the device that he brought in, like the device was looking <laughs> funny and then everything around his presentation was, was actually very, very simple. It was not with all these jargons or anything like that or AI machine learning or anything of that. So he said, Hey, here's a solution for sick people, elderly people, to help them to better manage their health. The device that we're going to be looking at today is called the Mouth Lab. Uh, you breathe into it for about 30 to 60 seconds. This device can cover things like temperature, blood pressure, uh, pulse oximetry, your blood oxygen level, and give you a sense of your health uh, over time. So you get a trend report uh, that's what they call a check engine light for your health. Show you the device. So, so I showed you the previous versions, right? So mm -hmm. this is this is what it looks like today. If you're not sure why a breathalyzer that tracks your vital health metrics is a revolutionary idea, let me break it down this way. When you go to the doctor because you're sick or for an annual checkup, they check a range of vitals and get a basic picture of your health. All that data from that one day gets stored in your patient record, then you wait. It could be months, it could be years until you see a doctor again. In healthcare speak, they call this episodic care. If you were to plot your health on a graph, you'd have one dot with a bunch of data and then like a year later, another dot and no clue what happened in between. If you're young and healthy, that might be just fine. But for the hundreds of millions of people around the world who suffer from one or more chronic diseases, like heart disease or diabetes, for them, those gaps in data can be deadly. Gene, Satya, and his team at Adar Health are on a mission to fill in those gaps, empowering people to live fuller, healthier lives. This basic thing is what our product is. So it All those lines actually mean something? Yes. Wow. I mean, 
do you like dream about this m map? <laughs> like I feel like this is like the, the, the neurons of your brain. I'm, it's not just gathering 11 data points. You're getting no. all of this A output. Of, yes. Okay, and that sort of crazy web represents all that interconnectivity. Yes. yes, this is literally our product on paper. I'm working on the provider's dashboard. The so, dashboard. Yes, so Got basically it. our patient uses the device, but at the end, doctor's gonna make the decision if he needs urgent care yeah. or not. So it's kind of like the data is only as good as how you present it to somebody who yes. can take action on it. So, so your mom uh, is patient number one, is user number one. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's that been like? Having gone through using multiple devices and multiple systems, she finds it super easy and intuitive for her because all she has to do is like pick it up, make an electric toothbrush, uh -huh. put it in her mouth, breathe through normally for 30 seconds. Once he, she's done. When you say electric toothbrush, why is that an important sort of analogy or analog for you? Because I think uh, that kind of signifies the simplicity and also the fact that it's a, it's a routine. It's a daily monitoring thing yes. because you're brushing your teeth in the morning every single day. Nobody really tells you, but it's a habit. So we really wanted to pair one habit with another habit so that users do it like without even like thinking twice. We are looking at a person holistically, not just offering them a device that can just throw in a bunch of numbers but it actually inspires them to do other activities. Let's say, for example, a COPD patient, one of their uh, key challenges is like they have uh, anxiety that if they go out, they get exacerbations. If they are actively working or working out or playing with their kids or grandkids, they have this anxiety that they would get an, an attack, more like an asthmatic attack. So for them, we offer like the data and insights to tell them, hey, Today, you're feeling much better mm. than the past two days. Mm. Your lung function values are significantly improving due to the activities that you did mm. that we recommended. Yeah. And to me, this was a start. Like this, just getting these biophysical measurements is just a start. What we could do eventually with the 11 measurements and then with the new biomarkers that we have is we can have a machine learning platform that essentially correlates whatever changes are happening mm. to whatever is actually going on with your body. Mm. I started this to help my mom, but I know millions and millions of people like my mom could be helped through this device. Mm -hmm. And also millions of caregivers like me can sleep peacefully. If you look at it in the US, like there are like more than 150 million people with at least one chronic condition, right? But if you look at it globally, there's like close to maybe like a billion people in this world have a chronic condition. So that's where the usage for our device is in billions.